The character of a society can reflect in how parents and the elderly are treated. In that regard, I have personally noticed a lot of difference in the way parents or the elderly are treated in India and in the West. My mother-in-law is Indian and of course, it is very common in India for parents to live together with their children. But when it comes to older people, life isn't so much full of harmony elsewhere. It has been reported that many elderly and sick Germans are sent to other countries for retirement and rehab because their children or caretakers fail to keep their own parents and elderly at their homes or even in the German retirement centers. Yes, this may sound very cruel, but these parents or grandparents in Germany are simply being exported in the last phase of their lives to other nations. In the UK, elderly people are regularly targeted by various disrespectful words just because of their age, and this patronizing language is even used by members of their own family. In France, during the heat wave of 2003, thousands of elderly died alone and their bodies lay unclaimed for weeks while their families had their annual holidays. Not only that, it was also reported that France had the highest rate of elderly suicide cases in Europe. Life for old people can also be pretty difficult in the individualism-driven USA. The famous American anthropologist Jared Diamond has explored several reasons for the low status of the elderly in the US. According to him, Americans instinctively look down on older people because of the emphasis on virtues of self-reliance and independence. Besides that, American cult of youth also makes it tough for the old people in America. In the USA, elder abuse has affected millions of people and not all cases are reported to authorities. It is also very important to point out that many elderly who are sent to nursing homes or assisted living facilities face various types of torture and abuse. In India, it's very common to see elderly as the head of the family. In India's joint family system, younger family members support the elders and elders also play a key role in raising the grandchildren. These close-knit family bonds in India are so pure and beautiful that on occasions, these kinds of situations even make me cry. But it seems that the new India is witnessing a gradual breakdown of its traditional system. In her article for the University of California Center for Near Eastern Studies, Judy Lin notes that multi-generational families are becoming a thing of the past in many modern cities in China, Japan and India. A report by Agewell Foundation mentioned that in India, over 23.3% of older people were facing violation of their human rights in old age, and the popularity of nuclear or small families was found to be the main reason for the violation of human rights of older people. Despite these changes, the tradition of living in extended family households, where relatives such as aunts, parents and grandparents live together, continues to be very common in India. 55% of Hindus live in the extended family household and in America, only 11% of people live in extended family households. Of course, old age homes or any other assisted living facilities for elders can indeed be useful in special circumstances, but encouraging societies to send their elderly parents to such facilities and normalizing it as a modern mainstream practice should definitely be questioned. After all, research suggests that in America, 2.5 million individuals who live in this type of setting are at much higher risk of abuse and neglect than older persons who live at home. And as far as Germany is concerned, what is the use of that modern healthcare system and that high per capita GDP when their own vulnerable and old parents and elderly who are potentially in the final phase of their lives? are being sent thousands of miles away to other countries, far away from the nation that they served and where they raised their children. Hi, my name is Carolina. 
The episode that you have just watched is the ninth episode of this data-driven and highly informative series. But may I also bring your attention to the fact that in most of these episodes, we hardly get any revenue from YouTube advertisements. For example, in this episode, which has more than a million views, the entire revenue that we received is less than $5. In this one, which was posted more than two years ago, the revenue so far is less than $4. That is why, without your financial support, it will be very difficult for us to continue producing this well-researched, thought-provoking content that you appreciate and enjoy. So please come forward and do your bit. Thank you and see you again.